This video is on how to set up and maintain a bow. You know, take it to your local pro shop if you can get in if your bow happens to malfunction on the on during working hours it might not be too bad or you can wait for the backlog or, or you can do a little bit of uh, this stuff yourself it's really not all that hard despite what the pros and all the little experts tell you you can do it it's just not that big of a deal you just need to know how and there are a lot of different ways to get it done some of the methods such as recently invented walk back method I don't know if you want to try doing that and some people say you only have to shoot one arrow and then that tells you your best because that's your best shot well that's a lot of baloney what you need to do when you shoot is shoot in terms of groups threes usually work because that's going to give you an idea of your average fault it's going to give you an idea of your average accuracy and uh, true while you're maybe in a tree deer hunting you may have one shot but uh, tell me if there's anything that will duplicate the heart pounding jerkiness excitedness of trying to get a, a, a deer down it's just going to be the wall hanger your personal best it, it, you, there's just no substitution for that and so what you need to do is have very good equipment set up so that when your error gets exaggerated by excitement you've got the best shot going here are some of the tools that you will need depending on how you set it up and what you do. That is a, is a arrow level. You'll certainly need an arrow that you're going to shoot with the proper diameter. There are some little knock sets. The string level. This has to be placed on the riser on a flat spot and it's used by setting the little black dot at the end you can set that on the knock side and then flip it over to the other side of the arrow and help you find this a centering gauge is what that is you may also use uh, a micrometer or a rule or something you can also set them pretty square off the riser but again that's just going to be slight approximation and, and the final proof of the pudding is going to be in the eating there are knock set pliers there's a string press and what it is, that cable goes through your loops on the end of your limbs. And as you push, turn that screw, it pulls that little metal part down and it tightens up. And you can use something as simple as that if you need to change cables or strings. Now, you also probably want to have on hand some spare or some loop strings. See the orange there? I prefer orange so I can see it. Also, you'll need probably some spare peep tubing. That is, if you use a peep sight that actually uses tubing to align it. Because that stuff does break and snap off and all that kind of wonderful jazz. Also, you'll want some lashing twine. This is very, very fine stuff. You can go to any place like Bass Pro, Cabela's, uh, or Lancaster Archery, and just ask them for a, a spool or what is. They'll recommend you the right stuff. But it's used to lash the peep side in. It's, again, that's not real high-tech stuff you will also need a bow vise now this is one manufacturer I think by Apple it has if you see the little fork shaped pieces it's got an adjustment knob at the top which pinches the uh, the limb and it clamps it securely and then you have the topmost T-handle that so it can tilt the bow this way rotate it back and forth the bottom T-handle allows the thing to pivot left and right to give you your perfect plumb what you don't want to use is something that's not appropriate such as a mechanics vise and pinch it on the sides of your limb that is not a real bright thing to do so you want to get something these are not very expensive and if you got a pricey bow something you've got a lot of money invested in, you don't want to start rigging it with how you set the thing up this bow is already set up it's already got all the components mounted but I'll talk you through the simplicity of setting those things on, mounting them, and then adjusting them. They're really not that difficult. Some things that you will need, the way I do this, is you will need an arrow level. You will need a string level. You will need your, your gadgets mounted, such as this sight, extended sight. You'll need your arrow rest mounted. You will set your knocks and your points this way. And okay, let's go ahead and try to talk about getting your basically mount it okay after you mount these things 
such as this ripcord arrow rest they've got specific holes you, you know that it's going to be straightforward mount your devices now like with this ripcord you can see there are a number of scales now they're not they're just relative scales it gives you just some points to know where to just in case you need to move it left or right up or down you have just some basic idea now here's a, an extended sight this one this particular one is available in, in in standard and you can buy the boom extra if you get a standard one but it just goes on here but you'll see in this area this is this piece is an added quick disconnect out quick mount for the arrow quiver and you see the mount behind here and it just screws right in and the arm can come out if you need to take that take that screw off it'll come right out to clean it or remove it in case you're going to have to change something or send it in now once you snap the string level on you should see that you've got a, a bubble on it for your left and right tilt rotate I often ignore that one because I use the one on my Toxonic up front I don't know if I can zoom in on that to get you to see that but see a lot of, a lot of sites have a level nowadays and really that's the one you're going to be looking through your peep to see if you're level so I just use it instead where would you start if you were going to set up a bow from scratch well assuming that you have your arrow level which clamps on right here it goes up and down with the little plunger it catches the little V up top and holds it you would need a string level which is this thing right here and you would need to know where your your center is well go ahead and dry mount your arrow rest get it about where you think it needs to be it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but it needs to be there now what you need to do is find string center and string center you come up to the top where your idler is and or your upper cam and you see with that point of tangency that's where the string comes off of the wheel or cam and you come down and you find the part on the bottom the same way and you measure the distance half of that distance is the center of the string that's like the center of the knock where the knock should go now what you want to do there is you want to get you a knock set then they're color coded for string size number of strands and you want to put one above at least one above clamp her down tight then I prefer a second one down on the bottom some people don't use a second one some people put their actual cable release here it actually picks up doing that we will pick them up another half inch of uh, about a half inch of uh, draw on there and if that's important to you do it that way but I use a second one put it down below keep it fairly snug you don't need to have it super iron tight but you also don't need a lot of slop in there because it'll let your arrow go up and down in the back you won't be consistent clamp it down then we move to the arrow rest 